In this lesson, we'll learn how to control the illumination fall off of our lights. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with just a simple light source. So let's go up here and just drop in a simple omnidirectional light. This should work just fine for demonstration. So whenever you create a light inside of Cinema 4D, by default that light pretty much just goes all the way to infinity. It will illuminate objects that are an inch away, and it will illuminate objects that are a thousand feet away. And really, that's not the way that lights will behave in the real world. Light uh, will actually decay, and light energy starts to uh, lose some of its intensity as it starts to travel through space. So whenever you want to start working with things that are a bit more physically realistic, we need to introduce light falloff. So if I come in here and just take a quick render of this inside of Cinema 4D, just press Alt-R on my keyboard. You can see from this one light source, very, very even, a uh, very uh, sort of fake lo looking illumination. So let's come in to our light and inside of this details tab, down toward the middle we have this fall off and by default whenever you create any type of a light source inside of Cinema 4D that fall off will be set to none. Now there's a few options that we have here. Let's start at the top with the inverse square. Now, as the name suggests, this is a physically accurate simulation of light, so light energy in the real world it will actually decay according to this inverse square rule. So, now with this enabled, we can start to see this really, really bright light source right here in the middle, and then over here that light is uh, nowhere near as intense as it was. So, let's come in and just take a look at some of these controls. So, right here we have the radius and decay. This becomes active once we introduce some type of a fall off in here. And basically this is controlling the overall area that we will be illuminating. So let's actually go back and turn that back on. I accidentally deselected that. There we go. I'm just going to press Alt R on my keyboard real quick to turn off my region. So if we take a look, we have our radius right out here, and we can actually see this. Again, this is sort of uh, helping us see visually how that light is going to fall off and decay as the energy travels through space. So we can change the radius and decay from this area, or we could just grab the gizmo and grab one of these little corners, these little intersections, and we can start to adjust this radius from here. You can see as I adjust it, it will also adjust this radius and decay attribute here in my attribute manager. Okay, so once we have an area defined where our light is going to sort of illuminate, once again, we can just press Alt-R on our keyboard and sort of see the result of this. So our light starts off at a certain intensity, and then as it starts to travel through space, it starts to get less and less. Okay, and this might be a little bit easier to see even if we were to come back to the light source, go to its general tab, and let's maybe give this light some shadows. In my case, I'll just introduce some simple soft shadows for this. There we go. So that way we can actually see some of the shadowing effects in here. And that might make things just a little bit easier to just visualize the difference between the illuminated areas, the uh, not so brightly illuminated areas, and the actual shadows themselves. So one thing to keep in mind, though, is that as we start to work with this um, inverse square light fall off, Whenever we start to take some kind of a light source and place it very, very close to a surface, we start to get these really, really bright, blown-out effects. And that's actually sort of a natural reaction. If you have any sort of a desk lamp in front of you right now as you're watching this, if you turn that lamp on and hold your hand just a few inches away from the light bulb, you'll get this really, really bright, blown-out area very, very close to the light source. But then as you start to move away from that light source, we rapidly start to transition from this very bright area to something that is a bit more even and a bit more uniform as far as our lighting is concerned. This is how, again, lighting works in the real world. This is exactly what Cinema 4D is trying to simulate with this inverse square. So, again, in situations where uh, realism is really, really important, this is a really, really good one to use. But there are a few other options in here if, artistically, maybe you want to get something a little bit different. So this is a linear falloff. Now linear, again, is really not considered physically accurate, but there may be instances where maybe what you want artistically is uh, going to take precedence over what is maybe physically accurate. So in this case, we do have some radius controls here as well, so we can 
start to illuminate just a very small area or a bit larger area if we choose. With a linear falloff, the light is not going to decay quite as rapidly from the light source. So you can see we do still have some bright areas here and our light energy still is falling off as it starts to move through space. Uh, but we don't have quite that same behavior of an incredibly bright light source and then a rapid fall off of light energy. Just a little bit more gradual. We also have a step which is um, again not uh, physically accurate but we do have some controls here uh, for this. This uh, in my case is just going to give a very very rapid transition so depending on the look that you want to go for this can sometimes be useful if again artistically maybe if you want your lights to cut off in a very very particular area or uh, you only want very very certain areas of your scene illuminated then you do have this option but for most situations I tend to stick with this inverse square Now, before we wrap up this lesson uh, we do have a few more options down here uh, for our light fall off so we have the option to uh, enable this Z direction only in this case our light is only going to be projected along the Z axis in this case the positive Z axis all the illumination that is behind that axis is essentially cut off so that could be useful in some situations if you maybe again want to aim your light in a very particular direction as we'll see in some of our later lessons there are actually some specific light types inside of Cinema 4D that can do a little bit better job of this as opposed to relying on this Z direction now one last thing that we can do is we can enable this gradient feature now this allows us to control the color of our illumination as we travel from the light source further on out so if maybe we wanted let's say a certain color of illumination to be illuminated from sort of this uh, beginning part of our light and maybe we want this to transition into something a little bit different I'll choose something pretty radically different just for demonstration sake but now you can see where we're going from a yellow light close to our illumination source and as we start to travel further out that light will transition into more of a blue so artistically this could be something really really useful um, this could also be useful for controlling your illumination so further out let's say if we're using the inverse square option and we move this a little bit closer to a uh, surface here again you can see it's very very bright at this point but what you could do is artistically if you wanted to change this a little bit we could change our gradient to maybe the same white color but just a little bit darker so that way our illumination is not quite so strong at this central area and so that way our illumination is sort of choked down right here but it still maintains the same level of brightness as we get further out so that's another alternative use for this uh, gradient okay so that's a look at some of the light falloff options that we have inside of Cinema 4D.